What's up, everybody? This is All Things Beer 510, and today is a very, very special day. It's November 9th, 2018. For those who don't know why this day is special, it's the 25th anniversary of uh, two of my top three favorite albums ever, um, two albums that changed my life, one that changed my life immediately the first time I heard it. And the other album changed my life as I got a little bit older. And those albums are Enter the 36 Chambers, Wu-Tang Clan, and Tribe Called Quest's Midnight Marauders. You've seen these albums in the back before. Um, I haven't really spoke about these albums, what they mean to me. Uh, what they mean to hip hop, what they mean to just music in general. And uh, today is just, you know, uh, pretty short. There's going to be a lot of blogs and, and written things about these two albums. And I just want to add my two cents about these two albums. Of course, you guys know that this is a craft beer channel. Craft beer. Uh, Alameda, what's up? Um, this is craft beer channel, but at the same time, it is also a hip hop channel where we will sometimes discuss hip hop. Uh, classic albums, hip hop lists, debates, um, asking your guys' opinion on a lot of different things. But today is just all about these two monumental albums that dropped on the same day. I don't think anything, anything, anything will ever come close to that ever. <laughs> as far as two monumental classic hip hop albums or hip hop. Um, or albums dropping the same day period that had this impact. Um, 25th anniversary also of Nirvana's um, In Utero album that dropped in September of 93. So 93 was a crazy dope year. In 93, a lot of hip hop albums dropped, but just to drop on this same day, November 9th, 1993, uh, 25 years. I am 33 years old, and we're, maybe we're just going to get started, cut to the chase. We'll get started with the first album that I want to discuss, which was Enter the 36 Chambers from Wu-Tang Clan. The RZA, the Jizza, Old Dirty Bastard, Inspected Deck, You Got, Ghostface Killer, oh. <laughs> Master Killer, The Method Man, um, Sometimes Cappadonna, ODB, um, you know, this group, this album, um, as you see, I got the tattoo on my arm. Um, this album, I can tell you guys, means the world to me. It was the first album that I listened to uh, that really changed my life and made me want to rhyme when I was younger. Uh, it, it, you know, I, I know the album front to back, word for word. It is an album I still listen to on a weekly basis. Um, it shaped my slang. It shaped the way I dress. Um, made me, it made me who I am. Um, and even the knowledge of self and certain things I know is because of this group and because of this album. Uh, there will, this album is my favorite album of all time. This album, nothing will ever take its place. It's, it's like, you know, when you have that first child or you, you, you know, um, just a lot of firsts. And so I remember, uh, specifically Ready to Die and this album. Uh, but this album stuck with me more. Uh, my cousin going through his tapes, you know, a little, you know, going through his tapes. I didn't have this album the day it dropped. Uh, but I do remember um, watching the music video. My mom and dad were big hip hop fans as well. I would watch um, Method Man and Cream. These videos would be on all the time on Rap City, on your own TV raps. And so I was, you know, seven years old, uh, eight years old. And I, I was very stuck to the TV when I would watch these videos just because of the, the visuals in the videos, especially Cream just stuck with me. Um, I didn't never seen anything like it ever before. And then maybe fast forward, I think I was nine or 10, a couple years later, it was like 95, 96. Um, when I was able to actually get the tape, right? And uh, just listening from the intro to the skits, it sounded dirty. I wanted a rap group just like Wu-Tang. Like, my rap name was all the time Wu-Tang names. And it, we're just going to go down the classic, the, all the songs. I mean, um, you know, when it starts off, Bring the Ruckus, um, 
just, you know, just bring the motherfucking ruckus. Bring the motherfucking ruckus. Ghost face. Just, to, just I'm getting excited just talking about, about it. I, I would have some music, but I don't want to get this video taken down. Um, you know, just... It, just the, everything about the whole album and about the intro kicking in the door with that intro song was sick. Uh, shame on a nigga. Uh, ODB uh, kid was crazy on that song. Um, every single song on this album is, you know, uh, crazy and, and, and classic in its own right. Uh, Clan in the front, um, you know, the seventh chamber, you know. What happened to you know, Method Man and Raekwon's exchange? Um, just the whole, you know, what happened to my, I, I let you borrow my tape. Like, just the whole, whole, everything. I'm like, giddy, right? Because I was just listening to this album, and I'll be listening to it all day, but I was just listening to this album last week, and it felt like I was 9, 10, 11 years old again. And when I was in my teenage years, when I was like really rapping, like, Sharpening my sword was listening to this album. Um, you know, um, when it would go to Can It Be All So Simple, and then later I would, you know, get to watch the videos more, and 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 then the skit at the, you know the end when you know, especially if you ever watched um, the documentary, the show, and uh, Wu Tang they was beefing on the bus and it was all kind of jealous of Method Man. And they were talking about how he always hogged the, the spots on the radio. And at first, I was like, oh, they always jealous, yada, yada, yada. But <laughs> one thing that was crazy was Wu-Tang on that skit, the main person talking was Method Man. <laughs> and so, um, you know, but, you know, he had this lead single, um, the only person to have a, a solo song on the album. So, you know, maybe I can feel, you know, why some members were resentment, but he was one of the reasons why the crew blew up, too. So, um, you know, the skit at the end of the song is just funny in retrospect. Uh, Protect Your Neck um, is, um, is, you know, a classic, 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 classic song. So, like, on the CD, Protect Your Neck is track 10. So, this is why it's a little different for me, because... Side A, side B, but like Protect Your Neck on the CD was track 10, Method Man was track 9, Cream was track 8. I don't know if it was a, that was how it was originally. When I'm look, looking at this song, looking at this, it's split up. As most um, play, if, if you ever have <clears throat> had any vinyls or anything like that, you see there's a side 1, side 2, just like tape on tapes, uh, if you remember cassette tapes, uh, side B, you know, and side A, and you flip it over, and so maybe that's what I'm looking at, this throwing me off as I'm talking to you, because in my head, I already know Bring the Ruckus is, you know, number one, Shame on the Niggas number two, you know, Can It Be Also Simple is five, but Protect Your Neck was not number six, um, so a little different in there, if you have the CD, you go buy it now, but yeah, um, Wu-Tang Clan ain't nothing to fuck with, people know that it's crazy that people know that the last 10, 15 years, um, that song, there was a video, but it was like, not a real video, it was like chopped up and everything, and different videos mixed into one, uh, but that is a, um, another classic song, I mean, every song on here is classic, of course, everybody knows Cream, um, you know, Raekwon's verse, Dex verse, the, the you know, Method Man and ODB in the in the intro, the song, the video is just sticks with you. Um, it was the epitome of what New York rap was, East Coast rap was the video itself. Method Man, M E T H O D Man, hey, you get off my style. You don't know me. Like, just you. I, just these guys, man, every member to have every, their own style individually um, is. Not, I don't ever think any group will ever come close to what they did, their impact on music, and um, just you'll never see nothing like it. And I don't think, um, you know, in, in music, you have groups that just are once in a lifetime groups, whether it's you know, Tupac or Biggie, Wu Tang is right up there in, in the lores of hip hop forever. Like, Wu-Tang Forever is not a joke. It is for real. Uh, 
when it comes to, you know, tears. I was just watching an interview with Jonah Hill in The Breakfast Club, and they weren't lying. Like, tears would be one of the songs that I'm like, ah, you know, even though Ghostface's verse was ill, you know, talking about the dude, you know, caught, you know, got HIV. But at the end of the day, I didn't want to hear all that. So I would always skip that song as well. But going back as getting older, it's I let it ride. It's a dope song. But when I was younger, I did skip that song a lot. Um, just to be honest with you. But but other than that, man, you know, I'm ranting and raving. But, you know, this album is um is a classic, classic album in every sense of the word. Um, it is my number one hip hop album ever from my number one hip hop group ever. Um, enter the 36 chambers. So now this we 10 minutes in, right? This is gonna be a long video. We 10 minutes in. I, I don't know if you guys are gonna hang with me, um, but if you are, you know, please tell me your favorite songs on this album. As my favorite song on the album, uh, my favorite two are probably "Cream and Protect Your Neck." Those are probably my two favorite songs. Uh, my favorite video out of all these videos is is "Cream." Because um, they had a uh, cream, can it be so simple? Protect your neck, Method Man, uh, Wu Tang Clan ain't nothing to fuck with. The mystery of chess boxing. Let me stop that. Mystery of chess boxing and cream are probably my favorite videos. Because the fucking when they say Ghost Face Killer and the guy in his verse was ill, um, and that's why Ghost is my favorite rapper. That made me the biggest Ghost fan ever. That verse, but. Um, Ghost, uh, yeah, Cream, Chess Boxing, favorite videos, favorite songs, Protect Your Neck, and Cream with Chess Boxing, probably third. Um, so, yeah, so enough of the ranting and raving. Please let me know your favorite um, cuts on this album. Uh, but now we go to one album that day. I wouldn't even know what to do if something had like that happened today. That's like, you know, Godfather and Goodfellas dropping in theaters the same day and you gotta and you only have money for one and you gotta choose, right? You know, now I would choose this, but man, I would try to hurry up and dub uh, you know, this album back in the day, you know. Um this is Midnight Marauders and hopefully I don't go too long on this. I probably will, fuck it, doesn't matter. because uh, I'm a hip hop fan and you, I just get excited and talking about hip hop. I can talk about this shit all day, um, and you know I don't. This isn't probably my first real in depth hip hop video besides the one I did a while back, but this is probably the first one in a long time. Um, th this album is a little different for me. Um, I was a Tribe fan. Um, I, my mom loved Benita Applebaum the song. Um, from the first album, People's Instinctive Travels, uh, Low End Theory, Scenario, and it still is my favorite posse cut. That was one of my favorite hip hop songs, even when I was young, seven, eight years old, just because of the video was so vibrant, so colorful, so just caught anybody's imagination and made me want to do this hip hop thing. So that, but this album later in life is one of those that influenced me. It influenced me from a jazz perspective, making me want to listen to more jazz. It made me respect and 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 put Q-Tip in my top five producers of all time. Um, when the older I got, the more I understood it. When I say older, I'm not talking about like in my 20s. I was with the shit like 13, 14, 15. So when I was in my teenage years, this album and when I realized like, oh, these came out the same day, then I was able to say, wow, like... This group is our Beatles. Tribe is our Rolling Stones. Like Rolling Stones, Beatles. Like that's what Tribe and Wu Tang is for the hip hop community, right? Like they, it doesn't get much bigger. And maybe the only group I could think of is like Outkast. I mean, people, you know, NWA, Public Enemy, whatever. But like these two, artistically, what they did um, with these two albums. Uh, and so we're talking about Tribe now with Low End Theory and Midnight. It just, you know. And, and also people's instinctive too, but low in theory and, and midnight kind of like separated them from the pack, right? Um, just the alternative, and I wouldn't call it ultra backpack rap, um, but it was alternative to what was going on at that time in 93, which was very Death Row um, and, and then Biggie, right? So you had Death Row and then you had Biggie and, and then you have stuff fall in between. And so what Tribe did was give you that, you know, it wasn't street stuff. Um, it was very jazz. It was very artsy. It was, uh, but it was the beats were 
would, would dope if you you could you know ride and 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 have those beats in your uh, in your car. Uh, the lyrics was dope. Fife came into his own on this album. Uh, Q-Tip was, was was dope. Droby is not on this album. Droby, I don't believe it was on Low End Theory. If he was, he might have been on one song. Um, the the album cover sick, right? Imagine today getting like Kendrick and Drake and Big Sean and all your favorite artists of today on one album cover for another group, right? Like, I'm looking at this, the people that I know off the top of my head. Um, you have the Beastie Boys, you have Dougie Fresh, uh, you have Kumo D, you have Grandmaster Flash, Heavy D, Too Short, Chuck D, Large Pro, African Bombada, um, MC Light, Busta Rhymes, um, oh God, De La. <laughs> um, I, I want to try to see if I can name almost everybody on there. Um, there's a couple people I don't know, but they might be on the producer DJ side. Um, Jungle Brothers, um, Mike Love on, on here. Who else? I'm doing pretty well on the front cover. Okay, let's go to the back cover. On the back cover, whoo, whoo, a lot of people I do not know on this back cover. You know, I, I think Farside is on this back cover. Um, a young P. Diddy, like super young P. Diddy, uh, Kid Capri on here, um, Boot Camp Click is on here, Evil D, um, dang, yeah, this one got me, um, I see uh, Pete Nice from Third Base is on here, who else, I'm, I mean, there's a lot of people on here that I do not know, I feel bad, uh, whew, yeah. Oh, um, now, oh, this is killing me. Um, Red Alert is on here. Um, my man, the young rapper himself. And then, I'm sorry, when you do these videos live, you can't prepare for these. Um, but yeah, there's a couple people I know, and then it's not coming to me, and it's like, really? Chi Ali's on here. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, so I'm a big 90s guy, and, and some of these people are eluding me at this time, but I mean, you know. Let's just go by the songs. Midnight Marauders comes on. The tour guide. People did skits back then. It really set you for the for the album. Then, you know, Steve Biko, st Stir It Up. Just, 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 just how the, the, the intro started, right? And then a war tour, which is probably one of everybody's favorite tribe songs. Just the video, sick. The lyrics, sick. Beat, sick. Just everything sick about that song. Um... My favorite song on the album is, well, I have a couple, but, oh my God, oh man, dang. Electric Relaxation is my favorite song. That's my favorite song on the album. But my daughter's favorite song, because I play this actually for my daughter, is Eight Million Stories by Fife. Just the whole, the whole, man, Fife, rest in peace. This song is just sick. That how It's just him on the song. Um... Suck a nigga the older I get too, actually becomes doper and doper and doper. That's and that's Q Tip's uh, so, solo song. Then Midnight, man, this this is a classic album. The um the night is in my mind, but man, Q Tip, I think Q Tip is very underrated as a rapper and a producer. Like he doesn't really get the props he deserves. Um, sometimes um, we can get down. Clap your hands now. Oh my God. Oh my God. Keep it rolling. Uh, lyrics to go. God lives through. I mean, this album right here um, is a masterpiece of an album. It's, 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 um, it's um, tribe bumped up. When I was in probably high school, it would be Wu Tang, like Mob Deep for me. Um, those were uh, um, Onyx. You know, I was more so gritty and, and wanted to, and do, did the street stuff. I wasn't doing like the jazzy rap, um, alternative backpack rap thing. Um, but the older I get, the more I appreciate this album low and low in theory. And then just the jazz. It makes me go back, search for samples. And, and it, it, you know, and just like Nas's um, album, The World Is Yours, made me want to search for like Ahmad Jamal. Um, this album made me just search for certain jazz musicians and really appreciate jazz and what 
artists of the time did with jazz, whether it was De La, whether it was Gangstar, whether it was Large Pro, whether it was Pete Rock, um, whether it was, you know, uh, Q-Tip. It made me want to, the later in life, actually dig for records. And not just dig for hip-hop records, but dig for samples and dig, like album producing, just to have a collection of. Um, this album is art, right? This album is a piece of work. It's artwork, uh, you know, years from now, you know, when, I, when you go to France and you see the artwork that we have um, in France, right? You go to the Louvre and it's artwork, it's beautiful and it's things thousands of years. Like I would hope that this album, along with Wu's album, Into the 36 Chambers, would be albums that are that stand the test of time as American art, world art that um, impact the culture. Where it's, it's 25 years in, and hopefully, hopefully, I'm here 25 years from now to continue to talk about 50 years of the album, which is crazy when you really think about it. But th these albums mean the world to me, and and Midnight Marauders did not have the impact as 36 Chambers, um, but it still has a major impact as I get older. I play this also weekly. And, you know, for them albums to drop on the same day, like I said, imagine Goodfellas and Godfather <laughs> dropping or Godfather and Scarface dropping on the same day, right? Like in the movie theaters or just, you know, imagine like the Super Bowl and the World Series being in the same week. Like, and you like just imagine like for a hip hop fan back then, like I wasn't, I was seven years old in 93. So I, I remember the videos right like I remember electric relaxation the video but I wasn't going to the store at seven right I can't I won't lie to you and say that but years later I had the tapes and you know, we're talking about still like 10 11 years old but I just to, I talked to people who are a little older than me just remember going to the store and buying those tapes um, just how fun that was for um, for hip-hop fans I mean I, I could never imagine going to the store and buying these two albums. And I'll never be able to do that, right? And there's things that make me even jealous of people who are older than me that, you know, the 90s uh, brought to us. And, and I have my own memories of going, buying certain tapes, um, whether uh, the people may not understand. And I'll talk about that later, like tapes that just, tapes, and I say tapes, tape CDs, albums, uh, albums that mean the world to me. Um, and hip hop and some alternative rock albums that kind of changed my life as well. But I just wanted to do it. This is like a 22 minute rant. Um, but just, you know, to discuss my love and everybody's probably love of these two albums. It's a tribute video I've always wanted to do. I actually wanted to do a bottle share around this and play this music all day. But unfortunately, we cannot make that happen. But I will be playing this music all day. This video is recorded at night. I'm tired. You can see probably see, like this guy is sleepy, which I am. But I had to get this video in so that I could drop it on the anniversary day because everybody else is going to do their written vlogs and I want to do something to let these folks know if they see it or they never see it that they have an impact on my life and a lot of people's life and in the craft beer community I know a lot of people are fans as well so big up Wu-Tang Clan big up Tribe Called Quest rest in peace ODB rest in peace Fife Dog everybody else salute peace and love until next time one